Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about NAD plus and how levels of NAD plus can alter the circadian rhythm and how that changes on ageing. And most of this work comes from a recent cell paper that used NMN and NR as a supplement for NAD plus. So this paper was published in Molecular Cell just this week, I think, and it's called NAD Plus Controls Circadian Reprogramming Through PAR2 Nuclear Translocation to Counter Aging. So we'll try and break this paper down, introduce what they did and what their results were. But firstly, we need to talk about what NAD Plus is and the circadian rhythm. So I've spoken about NAD Plus quite a few times now on this channel, but just to reiterate, NAD Plus is a cofactor and is one of the most abundant molecules in the human body. And it has also different functions in the body as well, but there are two main functions that NAD plus has. Firstly, as a redox coenzyme, and secondly, as a substrate of NAD plus consuming enzymes. And so you could argue that NAD plus is the most important molecule in the body, maybe with the exception of ATP, but without either of them, you're dead within around 30 seconds. So that is NAD+. Plus. What about the circadian rhythm? So the circadian rhythm is a natural internal process that regulates, on a 24-hour timescale, roughly, the sleep-wake cycle and other biological and physiological processes. So you can draw out these so-called clock of health and map on all the different changes that happen in the body at different times of the day because it's when it's most adaptive. But critical to this video is understanding how this circadian rhythm, this 24 hour cycle is actually regulated. And so there are four key components, obviously there's multiple components involved, but these are the four main ones. And these are clock, BMR1, cryptochrome and period, or cry and per, whatever you want to say. And these are factors, they couple together. So clock and BMR1 bind together and period and cryptochrome bind together. In reality, it is a lot more complicated than this, but for understanding this paper, that's all you need to know for now. So in this paper, they tried to look at the influence of NAD plus levels on the circadian rhythm. And so what I talked about in a previous video was kind of the opposite, because I talked about NAD plus levels as an output of the circadian rhythm. So in this video, it's looking at the input. How does NAD plus drive the circadian rhythm and how does this reciprocal relationship work? So to understand this, we need to become a little bit more familiar with these four components that I just mentioned. So in the daytime, clock and BMR1, they bind to DNA because they are transcription factors and they upregulate the expression of lots of different genes. Two of those genes happen to be period and cryptochrome. And so period and cryptochrome remain in the cytoplasm until some signals enable their nuclear transport where they interact with each other and also clock and BMR1 to form this macro complex that represses the activity of clock and BMR1. So this also represses the production of further period and cryptochrome. And so eventually period and cryptochrome get degraded and you kind of just repeat the cycle because you remove that repressive activity. For this video, I've highlighted BMR1 and PER2 because they're the proteins that we'll come back to. So why is the circadian clock so important to understand? Well, around 10% of the mammalian transcriptome, that is, genes that are expressed within a cell, is rhythmically expressed. And some of these genes include metabolic genes. And knowing this fact, maybe it's not surprising that clock disruption is associated with metabolic disorders such as obesity. And it's also associated um, with aging. So what happens on ageing is that there seems to be a loss of this robust rhythmic oscillations that occur on the roughly 24 hour timescale. And this obviously has an impact on the genes that are going to be expressed. And so you effectively, you lose this robust oscillations as it gets dampened during ageing. But the key thing is that this affects the output. So what else do we know about ageing? Well, one observation is that NAD plus levels decline as you age. And interestingly, taking supplements such as NMN that can increase the levels of NAD+, have been shown to extend lifespan in yeast, worms and mice, and also to protect against age-associated declines in mitochondrial dysfunction, physical performance, and the other factors that I've listed out here. So if NAD plus levels decline as we age, and there's also a loss of robustness of the circadian rhythm as we age, 
And circadian disruption is associated with metabolic disorders, which can be improved from NAD plus restoration. What is the connection between NAD plus and how is that mediated potentially through circadian reprogramming? Well, technically the answer is yes, there is an impact, but what exactly did they do in this paper to uncover this? So before I forget to say, these studies were done in mice, and as we all know, I am not a mouse. So what did they do? Well, they had some mice and they used NR, which is nicotinamide riboside, which is one of these precursors that increase levels of NAD+, that some people take as supplements. And they gave the supplement to the mice, and they did this for four months, and obviously they had a control where they just had normal water. And what they saw was, by supplementing, they re the liver circadian transcriptome, so the genes that are expressed in the 24-hour pattern, was altered by the supplementation. And there was four different patterns of changes that they saw. So, as I mentioned earlier, only around 10% of the transcriptome shows oscillations. And so, when they saw the effect of the supplementation, they saw that some genes had lost the pattern some genes had gained a circadian fluctuation, others had a, a phase shift, and other genes were unaffected from the supplementation. And so around 50% were unaffected, so around 50% of genes, which is a lot of genes, showed an altered expression pattern by supplementation. So the question is how? How is this happening? What is NAD plus doing? And one thing they were interested in is looking at the BMAL1 binding, and so BMAL1 is that transcription factor that binds DNA and regulates the expression. So for these experiments, they used mice that were either normal, in quotations, or they had loss of BMAL1. And this time, instead of using nicotinamide riboside, they used NMN, or nicotinamide mononucleotide, and they injected 500 milligrams per kilogram four hours before sample collection, so this time it wasn't like the four months, it was more of a, an acute response to see what would happen. And so because this time it was an acute response, they wanted to apply the, NA, the NMN such that it could increase NAD plus when it's at its lowest, which is at a site gave a time of six. And site gave a time six also corresponds with the highest activity levels of BMAL1. And so as I said, they injected them with NMN, and so because they did this four hours before they collected the samples, they did this at a site gave a time of two, and then collected the samples at site gave a time six. So once they had their samples, they examined BMAL1 binding in each case, and they saw that NAD plus drives circadian transcription by stabilising BMAL1 binding to DNA. And so this can help us to start trying to understand why we see such dramatic changes in the transcriptome because we're actually altering the binding of one of the key proteins involved in the process. But how does the NAD plus connection relate to BMAL1 binding? What, what's going on here? So to cut a long story short, the authors found that CERT1 is necessary for the response to an increase in NAD plus levels. And without CERT1, it prevented the stabilisation that they saw with BMAL1 with the addition of NMN. So what is SIRT1? So SIRT1 is one member of the family of SIRT1, which is one of these NAD plus dependent enzymes. And so SIRT1 and SIRT1 are deacetylases. And so effectively what this means is proteins can get tagged with different modifications. One of these are acetyl groups and SAT1 just effectively takes it off, it removes it from the protein. And this can have an impact on the protein's function, its localization, its structure, and its interactions. And so in this study, they looked at what happens when they have cells that don't have any SAT1, and what they saw was an increase in the levels of nuclear PER2. And so PER2 is one of these proteins that repress the activity of BMAL1. So by having increased levels in the nucleus, could effectively make it more oppressive to BMAL1 activity. So to try and summarise this together, because I went through quite, quite fast, increased NAD plus levels can increase the activity of SIRT1 that depends on NAD plus. It can then remove an acetyl group from PER2, and this somehow alters its location within the, the cell and or its interactions. But the main message is that this repression of 
PER2 enables the increased stability of BMAR1 at that causes the circadian reprogramming. So, okay, cool, you see this reprogramming of some of the genes, but is this actually a good thing? Well, this was the last thing that they looked at in the paper. So to assess this question, they then looked at the differences between supplementation and the impact on the circadian rhythm and other metabolic readouts in young and old mice. So in young, my, uh, young mice, they have higher NAD plus levels than in older mice. And so the young mice were 10 months old, the old mice were 22 months old. And both groups were given oral NR for six months. And they assessed a number of different qualities such as the BMAR1 recruitment, cellular oscillations, rhythmic respiration, and lastly they looked at their activity patterns as well. And so compared to the young mice, having the old mice with the addition of nicotinamide website, they were able to improve all of the, the qualities that they assessed, matching similar levels to the young mice. So this paper effectively showed that in mice, part of the benefit from NAD plus restoration comes from improving the robustness of the circadian rhythm. So I hope you've learned something and as always, thanks for listening.